everybody, this is Leslie. I am the colorist for Color Art. I've been mixing colors for the company for 22 years. We are going to do a resin mixing portion, but one more time I want to revisit the interference micas versus which are coated with titanium dioxide. Interference will look like white mica in the jar, but it'll interfere with the light as it hits a surface and puts a cast on it. I'm going to do another one of these colors again so you can see it. <coughs> what I didn't cover in the last one is these are coated with iron oxide. Interferences are coated with titanium dioxide. Someday I'll go into another segment explain the technology and what works. These are coated with iron oxide. These sit on the surface. This is your golds, your coppers, your bronzes, you know, these kind of colors. They'll sit on the surface like a big mirror, okay, and you'll just see that color. Then there is the soap making mica, which I happen to only have a couple colors of. This is from a company called Prima. It's one of their greens. They call it teal. It's more of a green. Now, why does this matter and what's the difference? Okay, so interference allows if I can get my Sharpie to work here. It allows 95% light to pass through it. 95% of the light can pass through the color you've got on your surface. It, it passes through it the color, it bounces and refracts back to your eye. That's what interference does. That's why we see the interference violet on the surface of this. <clears throat> and black is one of the hardest colors or more powerful colors when you put on black. That's why it's so neat. But uh, because black is the absence of color, again, that's another segment. Um, it sits, it sits in, and gives you beautiful refraction. Um, the gold, copper, or bronzes will hit the surface and it just stays there. It's like a big old mirror. It just sits there coming back like a big old mirror in your face. It has its place. But if you decide, oh, I want to take this beautiful, this green, this turquoise, and I want to add a little bit of copper to make a patina, word of warning, very little, a few grains to make some interesting effects. You may even want to rub it on afterwards with your finger, or put it in some kind of media and rub it over, because this will sit on the surface and block out any color underneath. All your color is lost if it's underneath the iron oxide. Okay, now 20 years ago there was some cosmetic made, micas made for the soap making industry. They wanted to be able to add color and sparkle to their soaps, uh, but uh, the, the people's allergies couldn't tolerate actual color in it. People would break out in hives. I know I tried to borrow one of those soaps and broke out in hives. Okay, so uh, this mica emerged 20 years ago. There was only about eight colors. There's now whew, hundreds, or at least a hundred to 200 now made. Now, the color that you see is not actual pigment like yellow, red, or blue that makes a color, even though you see the illusion of green. It's applied with a wax coating, and it too will sit on the surface because of the wax and because of the color coating, very little will go through. It tries to go through. And partially it will a little bit if it's just very little mica and just a medium, if you don't have any actual color in it. But say you mix this in a paint or went over an actual color of a paint, this would sit on the surface and not give you much refraction. That's why people love the interference, the look, you hear the term color shifting. That's because the mica shifts how the light 
sees the color. Let me say that again. Interference mica interferes with the light and then it alters how you see that color because of the light. Now we can use it to mix a lighter shade of the same color. <clears throat> this is a uh, this is an interference blue, and if I wanted to make a lighter shade of blue moon, and by the way, blue moon is real real dark. You know, I might use one part to a half a part, or two parts to one part. It depends on how light a blue that I want. Okay, but you could also add mica to, let's say, uh, this same blue, even though it's pretty dark, and I wanted to shift it to a violet. I could mix a little bit of interference violet. Sorry, one of my jars have stuff stuck on them. I could mix it with a little interference violet and get a different shade, and I don't mean to get off track here, but the whole point is the mica interferes with the light and shifts how you see the color. I could literally have three batches of the same blue base, just the blue, the blue that makes blue moon, and one would have green in it, interference green, one could have interference violet, and one could have interference blue in it, and they would all come out different. They would all come out different. So that's the power of that interference and that big term that everybody's hearing, color shifting, okay? It interferes with the light, but it also allows 95% of the light to pass through, bounce on that surface of color, and then refract back to your eye, kind of like how a diamond or a Schwarzkopf crystal works, okay? Now to to prove the difference between this, I have a little bit of water here, of the cosmetic grade Soper's Micas. I realize this is going to end up being a segment on uh, the resin, but we also have another line, Primary Elements, our water-soluble dry pigments we've been making for years. This is Good News Green. Um, and it looks similar to this color here. I mean, it looks like a pigment in the jar, right? Okay, let's get another piece of cardstock here so we're not messing up this one with my little directions on it. The difference is the color is a wax coating. So it won't actually, if I dropped it in this water, which I'm not gonna do right now, it would, the color would, the, the water would stay clear, okay? If I drop our Good News Green in here, it's going to turn a brilliant color of green. But just for the comparative sakes, I'm going to put some fresh water around on the paper for both of them, right in front of them. To be fair, okay, this isn't really watercolor paper. And I've dipped into the cosmetic. Now, maybe that's not that meaningful to you, but what I see on the surface if I can get a close-up. So the color is uh, shiny, no color on the paper itself. If you can see the close-up of this, that paper is just still clean water, okay? And when I dip my brush back in here, there really is no color coming back into the water. Okay, now I'm gonna dip in some of my Good News Green and look what happens. Now, you can see the mica on the surface, and you can see the green on the color of the paper, okay? How we make the primary elements is by uh, processing the color, and the mica, whatever color it is that we're using, and now because we now have the new resin art product, uh, we can now offer solvent color mixed with mica that goes into resin or water soluble color that mixes into your acrylics or your glazes or your, it's beautiful in um, 
heavy gel medium for doing an impasto look or stencil work. And by the way, it's stunning painted between the layers of your resin. So don't count out the primary elements. And here's the other test. Remember I said the water stayed clear when I dumped that other one in? Well, the water doesn't stay clear when I'm rinsing my brush off. There's actual color in here. And here's a fresh one just to give you an idea. There's plenty of color in the primary elements. Okay. So there's your basic lesson <clears throat> about interference mica, iron oxide mica, cosmetic grade micas. Now these are handy. These are useful. There's a lot of people using these in this resin. <clears throat> there are going to be some opacity at first, but if you saw how transparent this went, went in, that's why you'll see some artists go heavy on using the cosmetic grade. Fortunately, when I see people on videos uh, using the resin art, and because it looks like a pigment similar to this, their inclination is to use way more than they need to. An eighth of a teaspoon per ounce. I love to use these little uh, taster spoons. They hold exactly an eighth of a teaspoon so I can measure out my measurements when I'm doing my color mixing, okay? We'll get to this in the next segment, but here's your basics. Now, I have some already pre-painted that we did in one of the other videos. So, uh, i go through some of these color chips as we did in this earlier video. Um, this is the Interference Violet. This is the Interference Red. Love the gold. The green. Uh, the, I'm looking for the blue, and that's all I have made up. Now, when I did the same video, I had introduced, and this is why we rebranded our primary element uh, pure mineral pig micas, which is kind of a bland blah name, to the blingets, and we have the blingit interference, and we also have the blingit in the large particulate, these beautiful sparkly, sparkly micas really, really uh, in, inspired the name Blingit. And if you look at the difference, this is the Blingit in the larger particulate. It's insane. That's the gold. And this is the interference. Now, when I'm doing my uh, water droplets, you could, some of you have seen me play with this. I know uh, Petri Jungblood has played with the, uh, the uh, Blingit sparkles. So has Sharon Lindley that I've seen her play with this. Um, less is more when you're using this. You use about a third of this to the interference when you're doing a mix, but they're very interesting. There's the bling at blue, there's your bling at violet, just more pronounced, most more sparkly, and you can actually see more light through them because the particulates are bigger. And then there is the, I think that's the red. Anyway, I'll be back. We're going to do some color mixing. See you in a bit. Okay, I'm back. We're playing with Spice Ginger. Now, um, I have some other colors we're going to mix, but we're going to start with the Spice Ginger. Now, Spice Ginger, when put in the resin, looks like a canary yellow orange. Actually, it's the color that has the most yellow in it. I use it, and if I need to lighten something with a little bit of yellow or maybe add some yellow to a blue to try to make a turquoise. So it's very versatile. What we're going to do is I'm going to do two little tests here. So you can see the spice ginger in its purest form. And what happens if I want to turn my spice ginger into a yellow with just using some interference gold. Okay. Now I mentioned earlier I use these little taster spoons. They hold an eighth of a teaspoon. If I'm measuring and I want a partial portion, move these over here to the side here, I will actually, first couple times I did this, I flattened it out. I, and by the way, I love these little paring knives. I found these at um, a dollar store for a little package. They're adorable. Just kind of tap it and I flattened it out. Okay. 
So I know there's an eighth of a teaspoon in there. Now, yeah, in theory, I could just come over here and say, oh, I'm gonna take half of it off. But boy, if you get too much in there, you can't take it away. So I prefer to scoop the half I don't think I'm gonna use back into the container first and then I know for a fact that's what I'm gonna use. Now these little cups hold three quarters of an ounce, so I'm gonna get as close to a test as possible uh, the recipe recommended color for uh, normal saturation is an eighth of a teaspoon per ounce, which this is an eighth of a teaspoon. Okay, so in this other one, basically I'm going to put a flattened spoon in there so you can see the pure spiced ginger versus the one we're going to mix. Now, when you're adding regular mica, the resin art is preconditioned. These are color and mica that have been preconditioned so they disperse, the color dissolves and the mica disperses instantly. But when you're adding your interferences, be careful in your mixing. They can poof up on you. We've left our interferences straight so water soluble users can use them and solvent, water, solvent soluble users like people using them for resin can. Now, I've already done this before. I've made this mixture before. So I'm actually going to go a little bit heavy on my half of this scoop. I kind of want to take it to a really nice buttery golden yellow. Okay. Let's close these guys up. Uh, That's how I do my testing in the lab all the time with these little tiny cups and these little tiny scoops and these little tiny uh, stir sticks. These are little wood, wooden stir sticks. They're a thousand to a box. found them in a restaurant supply. And I just break them in half because they're the perfect size. Okay, so this is the straight spiced ginger. You can see what I mean, Lori. It's it looks orangey in the camera. It really is a dark burnt yellow. But because resin is viscous, meaning it's there's some thickness to it, there's viscosity to it, there there's body to it. It's not like you're painting one thin layer with a paintbrush on a piece of paper. So in the form in this that tiny bit of red that's in there that makes that more of a canary yellow is really dominant when it's and it's in this form. Now I'm going to stir this a little slower because I want to give that interference mic a chance to mix in. Hopefully I didn't add too much of my Spice ginger. That's a little darker than what I was hoping for. I could even go a shade lighter with half of the spice ginger. I get more of a butter yellow. I really don't want to waste the resin and do a third one, but oh well, I guess we're going to have to. Got to show you guys how that works. So let's do a third one. Try to do a half batch, tiny little batch of this thing. And I'm going to use more interference gold than spice ginger, but I'm mindful that I'm doing a half a batch. So I'm not going to go crazy just because I want this to dominate. What I'm going to do is add less of the spice ginger. Okay. That when I had a half. This one I'm going to try to do a quarter, so I'm going to take it and pull half of it off. Okay, and then I'm going to pull another half of it off. And that, I know how strong this stuff is, that might be too much. So, this is more of an eyeball effect. Something tells me that's enough spiced ginger to get to the yellow that I was hoping I could mix. Again, be being very careful 
to not poof up. And looky there. The beautiful golden yellow. Nice buttery yellow. So that's what happens if I'm lightening the spiced ginger equal parts, two parts to one part. Okay, so now you've seen some basic lightening. We're going to set these aside. We'll use these colors in a bit. Because now you've seen the general premise of the color mixing with one single color. And it's the, the uh, spiced ginger, if you read on the website, it's a yellow-orange in a gold base, so I used the same pearl base that was in that color, okay? So what if I want to make a peach? So what if I want to make a peach color, okay? Now, we have a color called Blushing Lily in the line. It's a beautiful coral. If you already own this and you want to do equal portions of the violet, or even interference red, either will work. It will lighten it to a pretty coral. Okay, you may want to add more violet if you want a pinky peach because the violet will at least interfere with the light and cast more of a pink cast of this. But what if you don't have this? This is a really, by the way, this is a very, very vibrant color, not for the weak of heart. But what if you don't own Blushing Lily? Or what if you want to make your own custom colors. Now I've not done this yet so this is going to be fun. I'm going to do a test of lightening up red plum, wild jasmine, and a color we already have called pretty in pink but it's a darker pink. I want to make pastel pinks and then I want to be able to turn them into a peach. So we're going to take our same little salsa cups and add some resin. Now you already know what the lightning does, so you don't necessarily need to see what each one of them looks like in full value. I will have one that I'm going to mix straight so you can see the dramatic difference in the values. Okay, so red plum is a very cool red, not queen stiletto. Queen stiletto is kind of a warm red. If I lighten it, the, the warmth or the orange in it, the yellow that's in that would come out and maybe taint, taint it to an orange. I'm not looking for an orange. So I'm going to take my little spoon and the red plum is really strong. It's a very, very deep, deep color. I like it. It's a very, very deep color. But I think what I'm going to do with this one, see, I know my confidence is up because I'm used to doing this. You guys might want to flatten it out before you get to this point. I'm going to use maybe a third of a scoop of the red plum. I'm going to use the full half of the wild jasmine. And I'll use a full half of the pretty in pink. Now I'm going to mix some interference red and violet in these colors. Oh, I promised you one color would be full strength. I guess for the camera's sake, I'll do full strength of the red so you can just see how different they are. Yeah, I know this is not an absolute full ounce, so it's not quite a full scoop of that. So I have some interference red, interference violet. I'm going to add some violet to my red plum. It's already in a red base. I'm going to add some violet to kind of shift the color to a violet cast. Make sure this is the violet. So here's my interference violet. Now I'm going to do a full half scoop. Quite frankly, it might be one part, two part on that color because it's pretty strong. Now the pretty in pink 
is already in a red base. I'm going to leave it in a red base. I'm going to do a half a scoop of that. I'm going to be a little bit generous. I really want to lighten that pretty and pink up quite a bit. And then the wild jasmine is already in an interference base. I'm going to leave it in an interference base. And that one, I think I'm going to go a little bit heavy on. I want it really light and delicate. Now that you've seen what happens when you add a little bit more to that spice ginger to make those yellows, this is kind of logical how I'm determining how much of each color I'm going to put in. One thing I can say is be very careful and put your tops on before you start mixing. <laughs> if I didn't tell you guys in the beginning, we're working with Resin Art, our uh, dry epoxy paint line. These are not mica pigments. They have mica in them, but if you put them in a, an acrylic paint, you will get gumballs. This is actually paint designed strictly for epoxy. You could put it in nail polish, and yes, it'll work, it will work in clear coat like they use in automotive paint. So first let's mix up this straight red plum. It was the darkest red I could make at the time. Hopefully I have more tools later on without turning it too blue, getting it too purple. Really love this red plum color, pretty, pretty color. I'll get a close-up of these guys being mixed for you guys. So this is the red plum. Now this is the red plum mixed with a little bit of interference violet. You can see the violet sitting on the top as it's mixing in. See that violet cast on the top? See how the light's already hitting that? The light's already being shifted by the interference violet on the top, even as I'm mixing it. You can see the violet cast. Ooh, that violet's really bringing out the coolness in that red. Pretty color. Wow, that's a really pretty color. That almost looks like a color we have in the primary element line, ginger flower. You know, like the flower, the, the ginger flower, but big difference between the two. Just lightening it with the interference violet, what happens? Okay, we're going to take the wild jasmine. Wow, that's looking like a nylon pink or, or uh, it's so pretty it makes my teeth hurt. Wow. And then this is the actual pretty in pink with some more interference red in it. You can see the interference red on the top already starting to show up. The difference between this one when we got the pink on this one, the violet on this one versus how you can see the red is in this one. To me, it's noticeable. Hopefully, it's noticeable to you guys. But look how saturated these colors are. I could have gone, gotten away with just a little bit of just a few grains of the color mixed in the mica to get a, I mean, mixed, yeah, a few grains of the actual pretty and pink color with just some of it because that's half the saturation of those three. Now, if I want to turn these into a peach, I think I'm going to, I like how this looks. I'm not sure what this would look like as a pink, like a pink grapefruit color. This looks like it's going to lend itself more to this shape, this color, the hue, the color, but the shade is a little bit dark to make that light peach I was looking for. So I'm going to take the pretty and pink and more of that interference red. But this time, heavy on the interference like before. Actually, be the smart way is to put your mic on the bottom resin and then put your resin art on top. I'm going to put some of the resin in here on the bottom.
and just a few grains. When I say a few grains, there's a few grains. That's nothing, right? But let's see what happens. I can always add more, but I can't take it away if I have too much in there. Wow, look how pretty that is. It, 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 you can see that it's the same family, but I can tell how much lighter it is. Don't really want to waste the tile on this, but I plan on pouring these out on something a little bit bigger. But just to do a quickie little, just a swatch test here. That's so transparent. That's that one that I just mixed. Versus the one I mixed before. This is the 50-50. This is with just a few grains. You see the difference? Okay, we'll pour something else on top of this. I'm not going to waste the tile. But I want you to see the difference in these values. Um, and for the fun of it, this is that wild jasmine that we mixed with the interference violet. I'm wondering how close it's going to come to this color we just made. Pretty close, not as transparent. This is more transparent. But this is crazy because this is actually a pure rotamine violet. It's kind of hot and this color actually has red in it. So there's our little color tests on what they look like lightened. Okay. I want to, which is the original goal, make a peach. Make that pink grapefruit color. I'm not even sure if that's a, because pink grapefruit is really orange, isn't it? Okay, the way to do that is to add a little bit of yellow. And I'm going to have to trust that I'm not going to go overboard. We saw how little it takes to have made this. You saw just a few grains on the edge of my spoon. I'm going to go even smaller. You see how much that is? That's nothing. I can always add more, but I can't take it away. Remember that. Not sure if you're picking it up, if the camera's picking it up. So here's that original swatch that I made with, <clears throat> this is that wild jasmine color that was a little bit darker. This was this transparent color. I made the same mix and add a couple grains of this spiced ginger and I'm getting a beautiful peachy pink and look at the difference. Get a close-up on that. So this is the peach I just made, that beautiful pink grapefruit color. <clears throat> and this is what it looks like originally without the yellow in it. Big difference, huh? Huge difference. So just a few grains of the yellow turned my pretty in pink mixed with some interference red into this beautiful, beautiful peach tone. This is a gorgeous color. I'm probably going to have to make this color for y'all because I have some people going to complain that I, I'm not making it, but in the meantime, why not know how to mix this yourself? I mean, come on. So, <clears throat> to recap, and I'm going to show you, I didn't do the red yet, the two differences in the red before we do this recap. Let's do the full scale. This was that red plum I mixed straight for the sake of showing you what it looks like straight. so you can see it. Okay. 
And this is with me adding interference violet to it. Look what happened to that color. Can you see the difference between the red plum and the red plum mixed with some interference violet? See what happens to it. So I'm mixing up a little bit of some Illuminite White. And that blue the other day was just gorgeous. Not sure how it's going to react to all these reds. I know it'll be really pretty in the yellow, but... Yeah, this blue. And you don't need much. I think I put too much in it last time. Just like a generous drop, too. This is about an ounce. Okay, so this is partially not even got resin on it, so I'm going to lubricate, obviously, the area here that has no resin at all. And then I'm going to lightly lubricate the whole surface. Uh, other resin artists do this. Uh, resin helps to move other resin. So it pays to kind of have... A lubrication if you want it to flow. If you want it to kind of stay in one place and you may not necessarily put a, a little resin uh, coat underneath, clear resin coat underneath. I'm going to warm this. I gotta open up more. I keep reusing this. I haven't cleaned it really. Now that I've got my resin kind of warmed up, I'm just gliding my little silicone brush over the top to make sure it's all smooth. Make sure we're covered. So this is the pure spice ginger as it is. And this is that pure red plum, as it is, straight out of the jar. These are full concentration of the actual red plum and spiced ginger. This is the pretty and pink mixed with interference red. This is the Wild Jasmine mixed with Interference Violet. This is that Red Plum mixed with the Interference Violet. Any color that I missed? Well, I missed my yellows. Here is that version of, may be act as our gold in this piece. This is that first version of spiced ginger I just kind of thinned down. And this is that butter yellow in the middle. That bright, pretty yellow. I think I'll put it down there. This may also act more as a gold in the piece. Look how bright that is. I'm putting the white on my edges here. Hope I'm not blowing it by adding that blue, but the that blue is so flipping pretty. Let's see. The color coming through beneath will be kind of fun too if it does. Okay. Now the interesting thing with the Lumilite, it can go over the top of color. It does not have to have the color go on top of it. So I am going to actually try to do the full figure eight. You can guys can now yell at the camera, go, oh no, she's blowing it. <laughs> no idea, volume or I'm not. 
Let me uh, get my yuko paper out. I have some slices of yuko paper I've cut up. I recycle them and just wipe them down with alcohol. I don't have to keep using a fresh shitty yuko every time. I'm going to warm our colors. actually giving me some interesting transparency where the white is very opaque. I can see through that blue. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let me go up. See how the Illumina light, you can see part of it going over the top of another color and see through it. That's kind of interesting and yet their white and black is very opaque. Who knew their blue had this transparency to it? enough being nervous about this. What's the worst thing that can happen? I can make mud, right? So <laughs> I am going to grab this blue area here, try to get some of the pretty and pink from on top and all these other colors. And swipe down into that. Well, wow, that's crazy with all that yellow in there. Nuts. Okay, I've got my little, uh, this has got some paint lift over on it. So I think I'm going to actually swipe that there and see what happens. Who knows what's going to come of that? Okay, I'm going to heat that up. Now, the Illumina light is very, very subtle compared to the stone coat. The effects are not as rapid. They're very soft. I still get nice lacing. I've gotten some selling. Like I said, I just couldn't find my stone coat. I have a new tub of stone coat white. Just can't find it. I'm wiping off my paper here. And let's go. Knew the red plum and the yellow would be so pretty together. Not exactly what I expected, but interesting effects. And for those of you that are worried about the other resin, I have been pouring off the excess in my mat, letting it dry to possibly use as future skins. I had somebody comment on that the other day, and when I did that swipe tile test on the interferences, I ended up pouring off this interesting pool of color. Parts of it I'm thinking of using it in um, layering and something, doing something dimensional. So, 
Also, I had another person ask me about what's the deal with the tiles. Okay, so... They make these blank trigger holders that you can buy them with iron, right? Glue them in, make a beautiful uh, tile, and if you use the stone coat resin that, that can withstand 500 degrees, You've made a piece you can give away as a gift. I think these sell for like $5.99 on the website. And of course, we know the tiles are about $0.50 cents a piece. They also make bread baskets, but the only one I've seen holds a 4-inch tile, where these trivets hold a 6-inch tile. So that's the thing on the tiles for uh, our viewer who had asked. Anyway, I'm kind of, uh, I'm kind of happy with how these colors turned out. Very interesting. Again, not what I expected, the blue or the pink, but you know, I have to kind of push my envelope. I'll try to get a close-up with uh, the cell phone so you guys can see the sparkle in the segment after this. And once again, I want to thank you for joining me. I hope you guys have a wonderful holiday. Happy Sunday before uh, Christmas Eve pre-Christmas Eve, pre-Christmas Eve for those that celebrate Christmas. And happy holidays for all of you that celebrate other types of holidays this time of year. And enjoy and be kind to each other. Bye. And here's a recap of the color we just did. I'm loving this Illumin Light and how it's lacing over that spice Ginger mixed with the interference gold to make that beautiful butter yellow. Remember this all interference gold and spice ginger. There's no actual gold uh, added to this painting. There's a close-up, very sparkly close-up of all the different micas blending together with that aluminite. Looks where the aluminite hit the yellow. It kind of made a green, which is really fun. Didn't expect that, but the color in the blue and the color in our yellow made it green mixed together. On the right there, you're going to see that peach, that custom peach color that we made. Coming down there, you're going to see that red plum. I'm really enjoying the lacing, how sparkly this is over that area. I'm loving this close-up of this cut, especially right here, where that aluminite, lumalite, and the gold and the green are all running together. Anyway, Merry Christmas, everyone. I hope you enjoy. Thank you. Bye-bye.